ladies, gentlemen, let the show begin. All right, do you like video games? And I know you do. What about entertainment? We got that to video game. I'm on a video game. Video game. Oh, what's the name? Video game Armada. Time for another edition of the games and gear of E3 2017. And of course, this is one drawn the gamer boss, Ron. You know, for me, there is a weird dichotomy between speed versus power. I'm always a big power guy. As for speed, well, I respect speed. It helps you get things done faster. But having speed for the sake of speed just to get from point A to point B faster as a concept of the game really never appealed to me. I mean, I've tried many games such that, other than Sonic, of course. Sonic, he's a sort of different animal. And I've already addressed Sonic various times uh, in the past, in this year so far. But this isn't about him. Sort of. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe in the future. But we're talking about speed, which is not Sonic exclusive. And more to the point, racing games. Yes, racing games. That one thing that you do in games where it doesn't involve much action and almost never a story until recently. Just go into your car or truck or plane or boat of choice and get to the finish line before your competitors. There's a market for that. There's people who like that sort of thing. Me, not so much. However, that has changed in recent times thanks to the inclusion of car combat games. Yes, things change not only just because you can now have to race and get to, you know, first, first, but you also have to not die or have your vehicle explode because someone's shooting rockets or chain guns or some weird goo-like weapon. Oh, it was great times. I, I enjoyed those types of car combat games. Those are the races that matter to me. But sadly, they're on the decline. They're on their way out. And only really Mario Kart is completely focused on both racing and fighting at the same time. Ironically, since Nintendo, they're, they're as about as PG as you can get in a video game market. But still, they're the only ones who've done it. They may have done it first, and I guess they're continuing on. But I do want more companies, more video game developers, to bring back the car combat genre. One of my favorite non-Nintendo ones was the Burnout series. Yes, I know, I know, they don't actually have guns on their vehicle, so is it car combat? Yes, because in Burnout, you can gloriously wreck up, smash up your competition just by doing the most basic of things, ramming into other vehicles, and blasting them off the road. Or blast yourself off the road by causing chaos and racking up awesome damage points. Burnout was the pinnacle of non-violent car combat? I don't know. Non-weaponized car combat. There we go. But them too, sadly, take off my imaginary hat, put it over my heart, they have seemed to have died on me. So what's a guy who loves car combat to do if you don't want to necessarily play Mario Kart? That's where The Crew came in. The Crew, yes. An Ubisoft game where, I mentioned this before, I'm going to mention it again, didn't I, personally, didn't have time to play right away. And by the time I did, and I wanted to, people have already went, like, if it was a race of things, was leagues and leagues and leagues beyond what I was capable. I was like, I showed up late to the party, and it made me sad, because I wanted to join it while I was fresh. Basically, the, con the concept is, you're a racer who is or is not part of some street gang or whatever, and you want to do vengeance for your brother. I forget the story, which is weird, but that wasn't the most important part about the crew. The crew is, you could race anywhere in the fictional continental United States of Peru. And that is about as large and as massive as you could believe. It is not just a simple like, oh, I'm from New York, and oh, I'm here in Pittsburgh in about five seconds. No, you literally have to drive there. I mean, you could quick time there. I mean, that's an option if you don't have the time. But where's the fun in that? No, 
You have to make your way through the streets or through the hills. You can totally do that. It is a large, large, the large country that is very similar to United States of America, where you can race all over the place. Now, take that concept and add online component with other real life people racers. Then it's fun. You could race in the streets, you could race in the road, you could race on the hilltops, mountains, crags, um, on the beach, the forests. Uh, it was a great concept, an always online game where other players are other racers. And of course, include various vehicles for different play types of racing, auto-wise of course. Which is, if you want a street race, you can drive a street car. If you want to go off-road, you get your favorite 4x4 and just have a good time just hill jumping. Ah, an awesome feeling. Like, you don't have to race one way. I mean, you do need a high-tuned V8 type of machine if you're going to be racing in a street or on a track or something. Don't expect that off-road buggy to get you anywhere. But you don't have to if the rules require it. And I always pick the big cars because, again, I like to be more physical in races. I may not be as fast as you, but I'm going to make you work for it because I'm going to put you in Zanzibar land every time we meet. The point is, Crew 2 is a thing of the start of this video you read before you clicked it. And they are taking the concept of Crew and they're making it better because they're including not only the auto races, but full-blown water races and air races. It's a beautiful thing. And you still keep the things like always online. Other people are racing. And in this game, you are just one of being the king. You want to be the very best racer of all racing. Whether that's four wheels, two wheels, no wheels. You race it, it goes. You're going to try to be the king of it. And of course, there's four factions of said racing goodness between street racing, pro racing, off-road, and freestyle, and they're gonna, they all have their own requirements, and their own, like, who are you, to, wow, you are the king, man, way to go, and you're gonna have to work hard for every one of those, and you're probably saying, well, that's tough, man, I mean, all four factions and all that racing stuff, I mean, I don't want to go to a garage all the time just to freaking get my vehicle and go to these factions blah 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 well guess what the best thing about the crew 2 you can quick switch your vehicles i don't think that's ever happened before I, you can quick switch weapons you quick switch your armor in various games but you can't just go to like a mini wheel and say hey you know what i'm flying uh there's some body of rock water let me just switch to my boat and then you phase into your own boat that you select into your quick wheel. That is just amazing. So you could be the master of air, water, and road all at once, thanks to the crew too. You could already tell people at home that I'm really excited for the crew too, because honestly, I didn't think this was gonna get a sequel. It was a great concept, and I know there's a fan base for it, but it was probably, I thought, was gonna be just a one and done -er. I'm super glad I was wrong, because now I can redeem myself and play the crew too with every other crew o maniacs out there. Yes, that's your that's the fan pace name I just created right now. And it's okay because I'm one of you and I can't wait. Unfortunately, I am gonna have to wait because the crew two won't be out till next year. Sad. But such is the core of life of the E3 maniac, which is also me. I can wait. And we'll see you soon. And who am I? Well, this was the ones around the Gamer Boss Bronze telling you to stay tuned once again for the latest games and gear of E3 2017 list item. Till then, take care.